Okay, in my last video I talked about using props in React so we could pass data to components. And that's what we're doing here. We're building these menu items and we're building these story items from, if we look in the HTML here, or the React rather, we're doing this. We're creating nav links which is generating content like this. And we're using this variable links to extract the bits and pieces. But this is kind of inefficient and you're not always going to know what the length of an array is. You're not going to always want to have to manually change the content like this. What if this array is being dynamically generated? What if you're using Ajax to fetch the data from someplace or you're doing it based on what data the user has given you and you're reading it from local storage? So there's a lot of scenarios where you won't know statically how many elements you're going to have. So you need to be able to generate them as this data changes. So let's um, come in here and we'll comment this out. So we'll use our React comments. There we are. And I've got an extra curly brace here. We'll get rid of that. There we go. So we've got our nav items commented out and oh we need to refresh this so yarn start or npm start depending on which one you want to use so that's got the scripts running again it's recompiled there we are here's our page without the nav menu now i want to build the nav menu i want to put it back but i don't want to have to do this I have to statically write out each of the items i'd like to use some sort of loop well, arrays have that great for each loop, but the problem with the for each loop is that it doesn't give you anything back. It just runs through and does a step, a series of steps. I'm going to use the map method. So if you're not familiar with that, I'll put a link to that down in the um, uh, description for the video. So you can go and watch how map works to understand that if you don't currently. We're going to do this. We're going to call the map method on the links array to generate these guys right here. So this is JavaScript. Therefore, we have to put curly braces around it like that. There we go. Now inside of here, I can put the name of a function. I could create a function up here to call, or I can just simply put the function inside of here. We'll use a ES6 arrow function just like that. Okay, so we're running this inside this function inside of here, and we want to generate one of these. Now, if you've ever used the map method, you know with an arrow function, if I put the curly braces here, then I have to return something inside. But if I'm returning everything on the same line, I'm okay. Or if I want what I want to return is an object, I can put parentheses like this around what I'm returning. Now I don't need the curly braces here because what I'm returning is going to be an object. There we are. So here's the round parentheses that are going to go around an object that I'm going to return. And the object that I'm going to return is navlink. This is the object that I'm returning from the map method. Now I'm going to get some failures here because I don't have the uh, the parameters. There we are. We're missing the info.url and the info.label. So we need to pass those in. Info equals just like we did down here. Now we could do this like that. That's going to give us home, 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 home because it's targeting the first one. Or we could inside of here, create an object and give it the label and URL parameters. Like that. All right, so this is an object that we're passing down, just like here. This has got the same structure as that. If we look at the page, there we are, four elements being created. And they're all using this same label. So I'm looping four times because this is four elements. We could change this object 
into the links object. We could say links. And then inside of here, I need a counter. So item index, we could put index inside of here. That's going to work to do the same thing. It's going to create four nav links and it's going to pass the elements just like we did here. There we are. This works. But instead of doing that, why not just item? Because this is what item is. Item in, a f in the map loop, this is replacing it. Item is that object. And then it's this object, then it's this object, then it's this object. So we can just do this item. And there we have it. It's compiled correctly. And we have the elements that we need. So this is just a quick and easy way. The map method. You need to wrap it inside of parentheses because it is JavaScript. The map method itself, there's its start and its end. You do need to put the parentheses around here. Even if you've got one item, so we're not using index, I could remove index from here. Uh, if I don't put the parentheses around this, this will fail in React, in JSX. So I need to have the parentheses around this element. And I need to put the parentheses around here because what I'm returning is an object. So this is being treated like it's just one line. I don't need the curly braces, but I do need, the, or the curly braces are optional, but I do need the parentheses around here because what I'm returning is an object. I don't want it to be taken apart. So that's the map method. Now, there is one error that's taking place here, which we're not really seeing, but let's come to the page and take a look. In the React tools, so we're going to inspect this. Open this up. Here's the error right here. Each child of an array or iterator should have a unique key prop. Now this is a React error that's happening. React wants to have a unique identifier for every one of these nav links. The reason being, we're going through an array here. Item 0, 1, 2, 3. There could be 50 items, there could be one item. Items could be removed. And if the items are removed, then there's no way to really keep track of it anymore. Once items start getting moved and renamed and renumbered, it's hard for React to keep track of which items are which. So the way it does that is with a property called key. So inside of here, you would want to have a value. Now, we're, we can't hard code it. I couldn't say this is the key because then all four of them are going to have that as the key. If we take a look inside of here, there we go. It gives me the error. Hey, you've got the same key on all these elements. So we'll take a look inside of app, nav. Here we are. Here's our four elements. This is the HTML. Now, if I come in here and we go to the React tab, now this is our React app inside of nav menu. Zoom in, make this easier for you guys to see. There it is. There's the key element. And this is what React uses to keep track of a list of components. So I need something unique. Well, if you have something in here, say an ID property, that is the ideal thing to use. So you could come in and create a label for each one of them, or an ID for each one of them, rather. Or you could use some property as the ID. There we are. We've got IDs on each one of them. I could come in here and say curly braces because it's JavaScript, item.id. So I'm targeting these and using those as my keys. And there they are. There's the individual keys. My JavaScript error has gone away because I have given a unique identifier for each one of them. And this will tend to be what you use most, the ID from your data. But there will be times where you don't have that ID. You could use one of the other properties. If you've got something that's guaranteed to be unique, like .url gives me these values. If we look inside of here now, nav menu, there's the keys. So that would work. If in a pinch, if you absolutely have to, 
This is not recommended, but you can use the index number for your array. So you can do that. The only problem is don't rely on that number um, to be a determinant of what the sequence of the elements is, because as I was saying before, with React, you can be removing elements, you can be adding elements, you can be reordering the elements. So this number is not guaranteed to be in the same order it was when you created all your elements. Take a look inside of here one more time. There it is. So you can use the index number, but it's not recommended to do that. It's much better to use some other value or create some other value that will be a unique value for each one of the items. So when you generate your component, you'll have that. And this is the way that you will create a lot of your elements inside of React. You will be taking an array of data, looping through it with the map method. If you have an object, with the object, you can use the object.keys method to generate an array from the object and then loop through that array to target the various elements. All right, so I hope that uh, makes sense. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I will leave a link to the map video. So if you don't fully understand how map works, you can watch that video as well. Um, if you found this useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.